and the power in the south. So now that they were free, it was pretty unsettling to the social order in the South. So uh, through provisions of the Reconstruction Act, uh, black people were now allowed to be part in the government. Um, they began to vote in large numbers and served as dele delegates in the state constitutional conventions in 1868. Um, they served at every level of the government <coughs> during Reconstruction. Um, so in politics, the black voters had been repressed since Reconstruction. Um, in the 15th Amendment, they were given the right to vote, but after that, there were uh, in a lot of ways, they were denied this right. There was a literacy test made in 1890, and the pay poll taxes, which affected both white and black voters who couldn't afford to vote. But I think the literacy test was kind of specifically meant to stop black people from voting. And certain politicians would justify this by saying they were cleaning up, like, cleaning up the government by um, making it so black people couldn't vote. Um, a lot of better paying jobs were reserved for white people, while the most dangerous, labor intensive, intensive and dirtiest and low paying jobs were taken by black people. And also um, the Jim Crow laws pretty much opened up the idea for segregation. Um, in the Plessy versus Ferguson case in 1896, which made it legal for African Americans to be segregated by saying that they could have separate but equal access to the same stuff. So along with legal um, blockings that made it so that African Americans weren't equal to black people. There was also a lot of hate crimes and violence toward black people. Um, so this really started in the Reconstruction period, where there were there were urban riots and fights and organized vigilante groups that targeted <coughs> black people. The urban riots were because um, the huge number of free black slaves would go to the cities because they saw more opportunity there for work and also they thought maybe they could make their own towns there and they could have some power there because the Republicans had a huge control over the cities more than in the country and so the cities also became like filled with riots because but in nearly every conflict it was white people that started the violence in reaction to Republican, Republican rallies or conventions that tried to boost um, the rights of black people. And also there were interpersonal violences where, um, where white people would just randomly attack black people. They didn't know who the black person was, but they just attacked them because they didn't like them. And the KKK and other hate groups became popular and the KKK started in 1866 and um, they and white mobs murdered roughly 5,000 African Americans between the 1880s and 1950s. Um, lynching was a very common form of violence. Um, the victims weren't just simply hanged, they were tortured before being killed and the lynchings themselves became carnivals. In one case in 1899, um, a black man was accused of killing and killing his white employer and raping his wife. Um, the black man, Sam Hose, was captured and word of, word of the impending lynching brought 4,000 visitors from Atlanta and railroad companies would open up special lines when they heard that there was lynching to the area so that they could compensate for the influx of passengers. 
So these were all of these hate crimes were done so that um, African Americans couldn't have the right because when the legal measures couldn't stop African Americans from voting or whatever, the fear that the hate crimes caused would stop them. Uh, Republicans, politicians were also killed though because they tried to increase the rights of black men. But the Enforcement Act of 1870 and 1871 tried to stop these killings, but it wasn't very successful. Okay. Wait, would you, what, what is your robot This picture? Yeah, what is that? Uh, that's the KKK. Okay. Or some other hate group, we're not really sure. Yeah. Um, and they're in a black home and they're about to shoot some people. And what's that, that, so that's some kind of etching, or you want, do you remember what source that was? It was, that was, this was yeah. one of the ones from the Library of Congress. Okay, so this was drawn. Drawn? Yeah. Do you want us to look it up? That's I'm just curious, so this is in looking and explaining some of your sources, if you kind of, I mean, don't skip over these wonderful photos and things you have. Oh, okay. Um, this one, this is like a wood engraving, a wood, wood carving. Engraving. And uh, it was on in front of a magazine. It was part of a magazine. It, it's supposed to be like depicting the first black voters. Okay. And yeah. this one was cool because um, it didn't show black people as like stupid or like animalistic, and they had like some like respectable jobs. Like that's a soldier, that's like a farmer, and that's like a normal black person. I guess you could say. <laughs> from that. I don't know. It was like symbolize like a normal yeah, person. Yeah. So Average. it yeah. was a little bit more respectful. Yeah. Alright. So um, overall there's there were like good things and bad things relating to race during this time. Um, so until eighteen seventy when the fifteenth amendment was ratified, black people were still not allowed to vote and then even after that, there was a lot of there were a lot of issues surrounding that, like um, bribery and like white people would threaten black people not to vote and like pay them not to vote and also um, like stuff the ballots and stuff. So there wasn't there wasn't really a huge opportunity for black people to get like equal representation. Um, also, there were the hate groups and terrorist organizations like the Ku Klux Klan um, that would terrorize African Americans. And there was segregation and the Jim Crow laws. Um, on the positive side, there were no longer slaves and um, they were allowed to join the military. Like, for example, the Buffalo Soldiers, which is in the picture. Um, there were the African American cavalrymen, um, yeah, and their nickname was Buffalo Soldiers, so I think it was a good thing that they were allowed to join the military. I mean, it's said that they still face, like, racial prejudice within yeah. the military itself, but they could legally serve, which was a good thing. So now, immigration. So, at first, well, there was a huge influx of immigrants within the 1800s, but the late 1800s saw like, there was like just as many immigrants. And so, one reason why they first came to America was because of the farmland. But when the but when the frontier land was like all divided up and there wasn't any room for any more farmers. Um, most of the immigrants came to work in the city, which helped urbanization and it helped boost the Industrial Rev Revolution because the huge number of immigrants made it so that there was a huge pool of labor. And so the reason, other reasons that they came were because there was political upset or crowdedness in their own countries and they saw America as the land of opportunity. And so. Um, by 1880, over 200,000 Chinese migrants lived in the U.S., and they worked mostly in the railroads. Um, 
Between 1870 and 1920, over 25 million immigrants arrived in the U.S., and by 1890, most of the large cities had roughly between 60 or 90 percent um, immigrant population. And cities like New York, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and Milwaukee were the ones with the largest. Um, between 1870 and the 1900s, 12 million immigrants arrived in the U.S. And um, one other reason why they came was that during the Industrial Revolution, factories would go over to Europe and Asia and hire workers there, promising them lower wages than if they, than like the ones that were already in America. But they did that to convince them to come over because they didn't know that they were getting lower wages. They just knew they had a job. And um, so railroad companies did this, and so did most of the major factories. So, effects of immigration. Um, na nativists oppose immigration on the grounds that the new types of immigrants um, had uh, different languages, customs, and appearances. So, they were prejudiced against immigrants. Um, the Chinese had faced a lot of violence. Um, before the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1882, which blocked the Chinese laborers from entering the country. And no Chinese person that left the states was able to return afterwards. In 1887, the nativists became the American Protective Association. They tried to pass several literacy test laws against the immigrants, but that was a failed attempt. Overall, most of America was all right with the high number of immigrants because of the huge need that we had for workers. Um, xenophobia increased during the economic depressions or panics in 1873 and 1893, and the Chinese con consistently faced more violence than any other racial group. So do you want to go back slide? This is a migrant family from Italy, and Italy was one of the new, like, groups. Like, they, there wasn't a huge number of Italian immigrants before um, the, the late 1800s, but in the late 1800s, a huge number of immigrants from Italy came. And this is one of the families in Ellis Island. This was in one of our packets too. Yeah. Um, it's it's pretty much just a cartoon showing how we need to kick the Chinese out. Yeah. By the Working Men's Party. Yeah. Yep. Okay.